True prophetic love, a bond that's pure and true. True prophetic love, a love that guides us all in everything we do. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala khatam in nabiyyin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله The final prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم has stated Whoever recites salat upon me three times in a day and three times in the night showing devotion and affection towards me it is upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the sins he committed during that day and night. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madi Shah, welcome back to our program True Prophetic Love, in which we are learning the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In our previous episode we mentioned the love of Amir of Ahl Sunnah towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his services to the nation of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and today inshallah we will, we will return to our topic of the Sahaba Ali Muridwan and the love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam today inshallah we will be mentioning the battle of Badr and how the Sahaba Ali Muridwan they they showed their love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this battle inshallah before departing from Madinatul Munawwara in the second year of Al Hijri in Ramadan for the Battle of Badr, the Prophet وسلم, he inquired from the Sahaba ridwan, regarding their opinion and consulted them concerning the news that the disbelievers were mobilizing an attack on the Muslims. So hearing this, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and Sayyidina Umar they and the other muhajirun they said together that we you know we are ready to face the kufa the disbelievers Sayyidina miqdad radiyallahu an he said o prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam press forward to accomplish that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to do we will stand by you by allah we shall never say to you as the jews said to sayyidina musa alayhi salatu wassalam that go alone with your Lord and fight with him for us while we remain here and await your return. But rather, we say, go forth you and your Lord to fight for we are fighting with you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has sent you with the truth. Even if you were to take us to Barkul Ghimad, we will tolerate all the hardships until we reach it with you. Subhanallah. He said, we will fight on your left and your right and in front of you and behind you until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you victory and triumph, subhanAllah. When this had been said by Sayyidina Miqtad radiallahu ta'ala an, from the side of the Muhajirun, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam awaited a response from the Ansar. Ansar were the people of Medina to Munawwara. When the Ansar, they realized that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was waiting for them to speak. The leader, Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, perhaps you are seeking to hear our views and our assistance. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered, indeed. And Sa'ad bin Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, and we have witnessed that which, which you have brought to us in, is the truth. We have pledged allegiance to you and have, we have promised to obey you. So O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, go ahead with whatever you decide for we are with you by the one who has sent you with the truth. If you lead us towards the sea, we shall enter it with you. Not one of us will stay behind. We do not fear that you, co that you cause us to face our enemy tomorrow. We shall hold our ground and press forward towards the enemy. We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you such of our deeds that will not disappoint you. Rather, you will be proud of. Lead us forth with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. He says, O oh Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Connect ties with whomever you, you wish and disconnect your ties with whomever you wish. Ya Rasulullah, take from our wealth whatever you desire and give us whatever you desire. Ya Rasulullah, whatever you have taken from us, 
is more beloved to us than that which you have that which you have left with us. Subhanallah. Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whatever you order us in this, in, in our affairs, our affairs will be according to whatever you say. And by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if you were to take us to Barqul Ghimad, we would definitely, definitely go with you. Yeah, we will definitely, definitely. And then he says, by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if you were to take us to the Bahar, to the sea, we will definitely place our horses into the sea with you if you had come if you command us. Subhanallah. Such was the love of the Sahaba Ali Muridwan that Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala an, he is ready to put his horses into the sea with the Prophet. Even though if you apparently if you go into the sea and you take your horses with you, you're gonna drown. But these are the Sahaba Alayhi Muridwan. this is how they are expressing the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And then later on, when the Sahaba, they are, the whole incident of the Battle of Badr, which you can inshallah watch in another program on the channel, I'd just like to point out some incidents from there. When the Sahaba alayhi wa alayhi was straightening the battle lines in the Battle of Badr now, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he prodded the stomach of Sayyidina Sawad radiallahu ta'ala an al-Ansari gesturing him back into the line and said, O oh, Sawad, stand straight. Sina Sawad radiallahu ta'ala he replied, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, I see compensation for you prodding me with the stick. Allahu Akbar. Upon which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam immediately removed his shirt and said, here is my back, you may take my stick and strike me in return. Allahu Sina Sawad radiallahu ta'ala an, what does he do? He rushed to the Prophet وسلم, and he kissed and he embraced the body of Rasulullah When asked why he had done so, now look at the response. What was his mindset? What was his thinking? Now that a battle has come in front of him, why? What, what was his mindset? What was going on in his heart? Sayyidina Sawad radiallahu ta'ala and he replied, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while standing in line, the thought that the time of my death may be near entered my mind. At that moment, a fervent desire settled in my heart that I embrace you, subhanAllah. On hearing these words, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam praised Sayyidina Sawad and supplicated for all goodness and felicity for him. Sayyidina Sawad radiallahu ta'ala an, this is how he manifested his love. It is a time of battle. It is the time of facing the enemy. And perhaps martyrdom is near. But what is he thinking about? He is thinking about the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Saying perhaps my, my death is near. So let me embrace my beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one last time. Allahu Akbar. And he kisses and he embraces the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the love of the Sahaba alayhi muridwan. This is how much they went showing their love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And yet people today will perhaps say, oh, that it's exaggeration. Loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how you show love for the Prophet This is exaggeration. And Sahaba never done this. And when you look at the Sahaba, they, subhanallah, no one can even compare to how the Sahaba alayhi muridwan, they showed love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then you had the, the three warriors of Islam coming out and facing the disbelievers. At that time, they would have this duel happening that a man from each side would come and they would fight one another. And then after these duels took place, then you would have the whole army coming in fighting. And so the disbelievers, they, they demanded 
that the Muslims, they bring forth their warriors. And Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, and Sayyidina Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala an, was sent forward by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to fight against Utbah, Walid and Shayba respectively. Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an, he finished Utbah off. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he overpowered Walid and he finished him off. And Sayyidina Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala an, he became injured in his fight against Shayba and he was severely wounded and he, when he was brought back on the back of Sayyidina Ali karramallahu wajhahu al kareem he asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, shall I be deprived of martyrdom? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam replied, most certainly not. Indeed, you have already attained the reward of a martyr. Sayyidina Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala an, he then said, O oh, Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, if only your uncle Abu Talib was alive today, he would say, I was a fine example of his couplet, his, his verses. What, what did the couplet say? We shall keep him sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam safe until we are struck down around him. We will forget our sons and our wives and fight and die for him sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. They were, they were ready to fight for the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ready to sacrifice their lives for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Another fine example. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala and he narrates this incident. He says, I was standing in line, flanked by two young boys. And one of them secretly whispered to me, such that the other wouldn't hear, Oh, uncle, do you recognize Abu Jahl? I said, why do you ask? What have you to do with him? That young, young boy, he said, I have vowed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if I was to ever meet Abu Jahl, I will either kill him or die fighting him. For he is a staunch enemy of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Auf, he's from the Ashra Mubashra. He says, I was looking at this young child in astonishment. When the second asked the very same question, and then Abu Jahl appeared before, before us, brandishing his sword, and I gestured to the pair that this is the one, it is him. They fell upon him, they seized him, like a falcon swoops on its prey. These are the wordings of Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala an, and with their swords, they beat Abu Jahl to the ground. So these young, young boys beating one of the leaders of the enemy. And who are these two young boys? They were Sayyidina Mu'awad bin Afra and Sayyidina Mu'adh bin Afra. They were two brothers, subhanAllah. Seeing this, Ikrama bin Abi Jahl, he was a son of Abu Jahl, but he later became a Sahabi of the Prophet Sallallahu a companion of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But at that time, he had not yet accepted Islam. Seeing this Ikrama bin Abi Jahl, he rushed to the aid of his father Abu Jahl and attacked Sayyidina Mu'adh radiallahu an from behind, striking him on his left shoulder with such force that Sayyidina Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala an, his left arm it hung by a thread, it was just hanging. But despite suffering this blow, Sayyidina Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala an, he chased Ikrama, who fled for his life. And even in such a wounded state, Sayyidina Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala an, he con continued fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, courageously and bravely. And he found that his left arm was becoming an obstacle in his, in his fighting for the sake of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, because it was just hanging. So what did he do? He knelt to the ground, he placed in narration, in he placed it under his foot and he stood up sharply to completely detach it from his body and he continued to fight with just one arm. These are real incidents. And these are real sacrifices that the Sahaba alayhi wa ridwan, they made for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. These companions alayhi wa ridwan, who fought with the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by sending angels alayhi wa salatu wa to help subhanallah so this angels alayhi wa salatu wa salam they helped these sahaba alayhi wa ridwan who were sacrificing their lives for the Prophet Due to the love for Rasulullah. Fizai Badr Pada Kar Firishte Teri Nusrat Ko 
उतर आ सकते हैं कितार अंदर कितार अब भी शुड बी विश फॉर द हेल्प ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहान टू एम्ब्रेस दैन यू मस्ट बिल्ड द एटमोसफेयर ऑफ बदर वट इज द एटमोसफेयर ऑफ बदर इट इज द लव an honor of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasahbi wasallam and defending the deen of islam and defending the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasahbi wasallam subhanallah sacrificing everything your own self your desires your nafs your, everything for the sake of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam your life and everything and holding the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what he brought with him more dearer than anything else subhanallah the companions who fought in the battle of badr you have such a distinction and superiority over other companions alayhi ridwan why because they were the ones who quickly accepted the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they fought with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this first battle of islam that took place in second of al hijri and amongst their merits is that the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam said indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the actions of the companions of badr and has announced that they may do as they wish for undoubtedly jannah is guaranteed for them subhanallah in another narration it mentions allah the most exalted said do as you wish for i have forgiven you Allahu Akbar these companions who are fighting with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the sake of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to protect him and the deen of islam they are being guaranteed jannah so why should we not say that har sahabi ye nabi jannati jannati subhanallah this is the reward of those who love the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam my dear viewers of madani channel a question may arise in in our minds that we do not have this opportunity to fight with the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we do not have this opportunity apparently to face the enemies of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we do not have this opportunity to stand with the sahaba alayhim wa ridwan we do not have this opportunity apparently right now to embrace the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sahbi wa sallam but my dear viewers of madani channel remember the one who serves the deen of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is watching him yes rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasahbi wasallam is watching him imam ibn hajj he says and imam qastalani he says that there is no difference between the apparent life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and after his passing and his witnessing of his ummah and his awareness and his knowledge and his recognition of the ahwal the status and the conditions and the intentions and what they intend to do and what crosses their hearts in fact it has increased after his departure from apparent departure from this world there is no reduction in that subhanallah When we say the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is hadir and nadir what we mean is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbi wa sallam with his blessed body in Madinatul Munawwara is able to witness his ummah he's able to witness his ummah one evidence upon that is on the day of judgment the previous nations they will be asked if a messenger came to them they will decline they will say no messenger came to us and so the anbiya alayhi musallatu wassalam of the previous ummah the prophets of allah they would say that no we we did come as messengers so in order to complete the hujja the evidence brought against the disbelievers of the prophets alayhi wasallatu wasallam in the previous nations the prophets alayhi wasallatu wasallam of the previous nations will ask the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasahbi wasallam to bear witness for them so this ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasahbi wasallam will bear witness 
that no, indeed, the prophets of Allah والسلام, they conveyed their message to the previous nations. But then the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam will be asked, how, how did you know? And they will say that it was Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam who told us, who told us this. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam will bear witness to that. But then the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, after bearing witness to the Ummah, his Ummah, which, which is bearing witness to the previous Prophets alayhi wa wa sallam, at that moment, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, will not be questioned regarding who is a witness for him. Even the previous nations, when the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam testifies against them and they, they say, that no, the Prophets of Allah Ali والسلام, of the previous nations indeed conveyed their message. The disbelievers of the previous Ummahs, they will say, how do they know? What proof do they have? They weren't here to, to see that. And so the Ummah of Rasulullah will, will say that the Prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is a witness for us. He told us. And then when the Prophet of Allah وسلم, he affirms what his Ummah has said, even the disbelievers of the previous nations, they will not say that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, wasn't there to witness us. He wasn't there. Yeah, how, did he, how does he know? They would, even they won't say that on the Day of Judgment. So the Prophet of Allah وسلم, is a shahid upon, upon our, our deeds. And this is mentioned in the Quran as well. And so, my dear viewers of Madani channel, and although my dear Islamic brothers, we do not have these opportunities like the Sahaba alayhim walidwan to go out and fight like they did, but we do have this opportunity that we can fight against our nafs and the shaitan. Alhamdulillah, we do have the opportunity to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu We do have the opportunity to celebrate the mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu We do have the opportunity to convey the message of the Sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam like the Sahaba alayhi wa did. And Alhamdulillah, Dawat Islam is giving us these opportunities. It is reminding us again and again that we should follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wada imama, keep up here. Smile, follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Attend the ijtima'at and learn the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and serve the Deen of Islam. Alhamdulillah, Dawud Islam is giving authentic knowledge according to the Quran and the Sunnah to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So we must take this opportunity and do not take it for granted and act upon what we have learned about the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen bijahi khatam in nabiyyin sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam. True prophetic love, a bond that's pure and true. True prophetic love, a love that guides us all.